Canadian forces are preparing for another mission to Afghanistan. CBC News has learned special forces will deploy to the Afghan capital, Kabul, to safeguard the evacuation of Canadian embassy staff. This is a major development. It follows a string of rapid victories for Taliban forces, including in Kandahar, where you'll recall Canadian troops fought. Here is Defence Minister Harjit Sajjan speaking about the situation in Afghanistan. We don't know the future of where the country will go. Yes, the security situation is, um, has deterior deteriorated and something that we're monitoring uh, very closely. We do have contingency plans in place to making sure that our, our personnel are safe. That is video from the Taliban purportedly showing their forces in Kandahar. The mission to evacuate Canada's embassy would be an urgent one. Taliban forces captured two more major Afghan cities this morning. They've also taken the capital of Helmand province. The fighters appear to be moving quickly to close a ring around Kabul with just weeks to go before U.S. troops complete their pullout. Now, we are certainly tracking this latest Canadian deployment and the situation right there on the ground in Afghanistan. We've got CBC's Murray Brewster standing by live in Ottawa and also CBC's Dominic Valaitis is uh, live in London. Murray, I want to bring uh, begin with you there in the nation's capital. What more are you learning about the event? evacuation of the Canadian embassy in Afghanistan. Well, what we're hearing is that uh, the evacuation is imminent. The government has not formally announced that an evacuation will take place. What we can tell you is that special forces have been on standby to help out. They've been on standby for a while. That's not unusual because the special forces are, in many respects, the go-to instrument for the federal government. And uh, it's their deployment would be small in comparison to what the Americans and the British are planning. Uh, both the Americans and the British have much larger embassies in Kabul, and uh, they would require much more logistical support to get out. Uh, Canada's embassy, the footprint is is reasonably small, and uh, we've been told that it has been over the last few weeks scaled down to just essentially essential personnel. Um, now, Foreign Affairs Minister Mark Garneau spoke with his U.S. counterpart last night where the conversation was specifically about Afghanistan and specifically about the drawdown that the U.S. intends to do. The U.S. intends to scale back its embassy but not entirely close it. Mm -hmm. uh, we are getting word, though, that the Canadian embassy is going to more than likely be shuttered, uh, perhaps by, even by the end of today. I know you're keeping track for reaction, et cetera, but stay with us, Murray. I want to get the latest on the situation on the ground right now and what our Canadian forces could actually be facing as they deploy there. And Dominic, I know you're tracking that angle from London. What do you know? Well, I think, Suhana, that uh, governments around the world have been watching in absolute horror at the speed at which uh, the Taliban's fighters have uh, been taking territory over the last week. But the latest is, is this. Late last night, uh, they uh, finally took control of Kandahar, Afghanistan's second largest city, home to around 600,000 people. It is a major win for the militant Suhana because it's the birthplace of their movement. So it is uh, psychologically important for them, but it's also strategically important as well because of its international airport and position as uh, one of the country's main trading hubs. The city of Herat in the west of Afghanistan is now also under Taliban control. That too fell yesterday. It is the country's third largest city with a population of around 570,000 people. And then this morning, Suhana, confirmation that the Taliban had also taken Lashkar which is just west of Kandahar. It is the capital of Helmand province and where uh, British, US and other NATO forces battled the insurgents uh, for several years. So three big gains for the Taliban in the last 24 hours or so. Governments, as I say, watching in horror what is uh, happening on the ground there, uh, especially in the north of the country, which is a considerable distance from the Taliban's heartlands in the south. And I think, Sahana, there was a feeling that it would be this part of the country from where any uh, local, any national resistance to the Taliban uh, would uh, emerge. But just to recap for you, Taliban fighters now control Afghanistan 
Afghanistan's second and third largest cities, most of northern Afghanistan and a third of the country's regional uh, capitals. Government forces still hold Mazar-e-Sharif in the north, Jalalabad near the Pakistani border in the east, and of course the, uh, the capital, Kabul. But concerns are growing that uh, the militants will, at some point, make a move on the capital city. And it has been claimed this week, media reports citing unnamed US intelligence officials, that they could isolate Kabul within 30 days and perhaps even take it within 90. So, Hannah. Wow. We will talk again next hour. Dominic, thank you for that. That's CBC's uh, Dominic Valaitis in London. Murray, I just want to go back to you in Ottawa for a moment. Uh, you know, much discussion about this being the new Taliban in Afghanistan. How is it different from the the old Taliban, if you will, and is it benefiting, Murray, from external support? Well, having covered Afghanistan pretty much continuously for the last 16 years and talking to a number of experts and people who uh, are still uh, talking to people in the country, uh, the Taliban were, up until about two years ago, largely a force in decline. They were divided. They were um, not quite leaderless, but there was a lot of infighting. And uh, to see them turn around from almost, I'd say, the, the, the brink of defeat to now being on the cusp of victory has a number of people who have been watching this absolutely fascinated. They, are, they believe that the only way that the Taliban could very well have, uh, have pulled themselves back together uh, is through foreign help, foreign intervention. And some of the Afghan forces that are on the ground right now are uh, encountering uh, Taliban fighters who are speaking Urdu. Now, Urdu is a language that is predominant in northern Pakistan and in northern India. And there is a suggestion that as much as 40 percent of the Taliban force is made up of foreign fighters. Also, too, the speed of the collapse of the Afghan National uh, Army and the Afghan security forces has stunned people, especially Canadian trainers who spent many years training them to fight this kind of war. And uh, essentially what they're seeing and what they're saying is that there is a, uh, an underappreciated tribal dynamic where, I mean, the tribes in Afghanistan hold a great deal of sway. And uh, it appears as though the Taliban have managed to cut deals with certain tribes, which would, might have stood in their way uh, in previous times or have mm -hmm. supported the government. And they are now uh, standing aside and allowing the Taliban to roll over them.